blessings everyone. This is Chris Kendall from TheRawAdvantage.com, registered holistic nutritionist, raw food lifestyle coach, and raw chef. Today I'm getting into that second Christmas gift for you guys, the inside out sushi rolls or the Uramaki sushi rolls. So let's get into it. Baby, I like it raw. Raw Advantage likes it raw. Ooh, baby, I like it raw. Yeah, baby, I like it raw. All right, so here we are again. Sushi, one of my favorite little raw food meals, and I hope you guys really enjoyed that first raw vegan sushi meal, the best raw vegan sushi out there. If you haven't checked out that video, you're gonna to wanna to click above or in the description below. I'll let you know that all of the things I talk about, all the links are gonna be in the description below, and a lot of people watch my videos and aren't subscribed, so if you're not subscribed yet, Go ahead and just hit that subscribe button, maybe that uh, bell to be notified when I have new ones. Like it, make a comment, all that fun stuff. You know, it, it helps everything rise up and we get out to more people. So I super, super appreciate that. But I wanna let you guys know that first sushi video is the one that I would make the most often. These inside out rolls are a little bit higher on the expertise list. And they use a couple things that uh, I wouldn't necessarily want to do all the time. So if you like the other ones, I'd go for those more often. But these are really fun, fancy, and fun to share with other people because it's like, what? That's that's raw? And how do you get it to stick together? And how does it look all good? And if you don't love the taste of nori, it's nice on the inside. You know, then you don't taste it quite as much because it's not the first thing hitting your tongue. So let's get into the recipe so for this recipe you're gonna need 500 grams of cauliflower 100 grams of fresh ginger three to four teaspoons of lemon juice or half of a lemon an eighth a cup of chia seeds i prefer the white chia seeds some black sesame seeds for garnish on top about 75 grams of red pepper or about a half a pepper two little cucumbers or gherkins about 100 150 grams one avocado and four little green onions. And then of course, you're gonna need some raw vegan nori. And if you're not gonna go for the raw vegan nori, then you can use my better than nori recipe. The link is below. It's all from Land Plants. Really dang tasty. It is actually better than nori, but this is great. You know, this is a certified organic vegan raw nori from rawnori.com. I've used it a bunch of times. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, it's pretty inexpensive. You know, I, I buy these bags of 50 and use them up. So we're gonna use four of these. This recipe is gonna make four rolls, you know, and each roll makes eight pieces. So you can, you know, maybe that's for one person, maybe that's for two people. For me, it's definitely one. And sometimes I even make a little more, but truthfully, this is pretty darn perfect, especially if I started my meal with fruit. Have a nice juicy fruit meal first, and then this as my dessert. All right, so let's just jump into it. And as I said, if you haven't watched the first sushi video, I do recommend checking that one out. It may go a little more in depth into preparing some of the vegetables and stuff like that. I'm gonna breeze through this because the biggest part of this is actually just the technique and how to actually roll it and a couple extra little tips that go along with that. But I'm gonna still show it. So what we're gonna do here is start with the cauliflower, just like we did last time. We're just gonna rinse it off with some clear, clean water. This here is reverse osmosis. Just wanna wash it, even if it's organic or not. This is actually a step that comes into play to make the rice just a little bit more sticky. So we're gonna shake off the excess water, but we're not gonna dry this off with a towel or anything. So it's still got a teeny bit of moisture. Now, while that's sitting here, we have that beautiful peeled ginger. I love ginger, so I'm using 100 grams of this peeled ginger. I have to use a spoon and just rub the skin off of it. And we're gonna put this into the food processor after just a rough chop. So we're chopping up the ginger into medallions. Place those into the food processor with the S blade and pulse it up. We're putting this in first because we want to make sure the ginger is well pulsed. So here we go. Sometimes a little bit gets stuck up here. Push that out. And let's give it a go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You may need to take a trusty spatula, preferably a kitty spatula. Get it off the side so that we can make sure this gets ground up quite nicely. So what we'll do is we'll put about half of the cauliflower in here with the ginger, break it into about 
bite-sized pieces just makes it a little bit easier and less likely that you'll have huge chunks of cauliflower left over in the food processor. If you don't have a food processor, I highly recommend checking out Lissa from Raw Food Romance's Wet Chop Technique. She actually ends up using a Vitamix blender and it works really darn well as well. So I would recommend checking her out for that or for any of her recipes and stuff like that. So I'll have some links below so you can check out her Wet Chop Technique and some of her awesome recipe books. We're just gonna pulse this up again. You want to get it into like a rough rice-like texture. So that's part of the reason we put the ginger in first so that we don't over pulse the cauliflower. I'm going to take this square Pyrex dish just to put all of this rice, ginger rice, you can just smell it, it smells so amazing, into it. And you'll understand why pretty soon. Any bowl will do, but I find that a nice square dish makes it even easier. So we use the spatula. Get everything off the edges, and then we'll continue and make the rest of the rice. We'll just give it a little bit of a stir to make sure we mix the ginger and the cauliflower all evenly. And then we're going to add the four teaspoons of lemon juice into the rice, just to give a little bit of that lemony, sour, vinegary flavor. We're going to stir that up so that it coats all the rice and ginger mixture. And then next what we're gonna do to get this rice totally ready and nice and sticky so it actually stays on the roll and doesn't just fall off is we're gonna add that eighth a cup of chia seeds. Now first, we're gonna put it in a grinder. So either a coffee grinder, your Vitamix blender, or this is just a little magic bullet with a seed grinding or grain grinding kind of attachment. So we're just gonna pulse that up until it's a nice fine chia powder. I use white chia seeds, it just looks a little nicer. You can use any color. There we go. So now it's just a perfect little chia powder puree. That eighth a cup really puffed up to almost a quarter of a cup, which is pretty awesome. And we'll just evenly pour this across the entire top layer. If you want, you could even give it a little bit of a stir to make it even better at distributing across all of the rice mixture. And you want to be fairly quick because it'll start to stick to individual rice, rice bits. Start stirring that up. See, look at that beautiful mix. Oh yeah. This just sucks up a little bit of the moisture and just starts to stick it together. But another added benefit is that this really ups the omega-3 fats in this dish because most commonly veggie sushi rolls have avocado, which is it's great, but it is also a lot higher in omega-6s than 3s. And this way you're really balancing out those omegas, which is better for inflammation and for long-term EPA and DHA status. So it's a little tip, and that goes to a, a little bit more in depth than this video is really going to go into, but it just makes it more of a nutritional powerhouse and well-balanced fatty acid profile. Plus, it makes it stick better, so it makes the sushi way better. Stir that up, make sure we get every little nook and cranny, all the corners. Make sure there's no pockets just of ground chia seeds in there. I've tried some other stuff, but chia works the absolute best. So now that we got this all mixed up and ready to go, what we're gonna do is press it down. And if you have a handy dandy little pie scoop, you can do that. Otherwise you can use your hand or the back of a spoon. We're just gonna press that down so it's pretty even. And then we're just gonna take that same guy or a knife and just divide it into four. Boom, even chunks. That's why it's really nice with this square dish. Then you can really easily see how much rice, rice goes into each roll, right? So we're gonna set this aside and get all these veggies ready. Now, we're gonna do this really dang quick because I went way more into it in the last video and it's really dang simple. So here we have two gherkins, two little mini cucumbers. I like using them the best, but you can use the bigger one. Essentially, all we're doing is creating eight little strips with these, or if you had, or if you had full-size cucumbers, you'd make four strips of about the same size. So you have one strip per sushi roll, but in this case it's two that make up the one length of the whole sushi roll. So I'm gonna chop off the tips. Chop off the tips, gobble them directly into the mouth part. And then, and cut it down lengthwise, turn it 45 degrees, cut it in half. Then we have these four beautiful sticks. I'm gonna do it to the other one, and that's enough for four rolls, two pieces each. 
I do also want to say, you know, the sky's the limit. You can get really fancy with this. You can peel the cucumbers. You can take out the seeds if you're using bigger, long English cucumbers. You can use grated carrot or thinly sliced cabbage or sprouts. So many different fillings. The purpose of this video isn't to give you the different fillings. It's to give you the basic fillings that are used. And then on top of that, you can utilize this technique to make many different types of sushi. I'm going to let you know I'm going to be coming out with a sushi book in the future here. So it's going to be going deeper into tons of different types of rolls and fillings and ways to do it. So I hope you guys enjoy this and more in the future. Got the red pepper. We're just going to cut it in half, cut those in half, and cut those in half. So we have anywhere from three to four sticks per roll, depending on the length of the sticks. So there's our beautiful red pepper sticks. Now the last time I used two green peppers, this time I used four. It's the same weight, they're just smaller green peppers. So last time I used two and I cut them in half, so it's half a green pepper per roll. These are just little guys, so it's one each. And I'm gonna chop off most of the white bottom. I might leave a teeny bit, but chop off most of that. And I'll save that for a sauce or for something else. And then for the avocado, it's super simple. We're just gonna cut it in half. There we go, right down the middle. Twist it. I like to use my teeth. Take that seed out. And then each of these you can cut into half, so you get a quarter per sushi roll. These halves I then cut into three, so I have three slices per roll. And then those are all rip roaring and ready to go. The last thing, this is an optional ingredient. You might have saw it at the beginning, but it's an optional one for the rice, because typically an inside out roll has a little bit of black sesame seeds on top. So we'll add that as we're rolling them. So we're just gonna roll the sushi now and I'm gonna share a few tricks and tips. So let's get close in here. We're gonna start with the shiny side down and we're gonna fill up about three quarters of that sushi paper with the rice. I'm gonna load the rice up on a cutting board, on a cutting board that you can lift. That's one little special trick that can make this a lot easier. So we're gonna load up the rice on the top portion of the nori sheet, and using the trusty pie scoop, we'll just press that down and distribute it across the top three quarters. So you might have to do a little bit of shuffling, but eventually you'll get it nice and even across all of it. Use the edge of the pie scoop to press the rice right up to the edge of the sushi paper. Get it right up near the top. Don't be afraid to get your hands in there to spread it out evenly. Now, once you've got that evenly spread on top, take your optional black sesame seeds and sprinkle them all over the top. Now, this is where doing it on the cutting board is really going to come in handy because we're going to take this covered up sushi mat, place it right on top so that the bottom matches the bottom over here, and carefully sandwich the two and flip them over. Then you have the nori upside down on the sushi mat. So we're ready to take the avocado first. We'll just do three slices. I usually like to put the biggest ones on the outside the same way and then the smaller one on the inside upside down. Take your cucumber slices and snuggle those up right beside it. If you need to munch a little bit off to make them perfect, that's good. Take your red peppers and just put them right on top of there and your one spring onion and put it right there. Now we're going to take the nori paper and the mat and carefully squeeze shut those ingredients. So I'm going to try and get them to be a little bit squished so that there's no space between them. Nice and tight, makes a nice tight sushi roll. Then lift up and continue rolling. Squeezing every once in a while, make sure it's nice and tight. Lift up, continue rolling. You're gonna start feeling rice, so we're gonna roll that all the way over until the end meets the end, 
and just squeeze it nice and tight. And when you unroll, you have a perfect inside out roll. Now, the next little trick that you're gonna to wanna to do, take some plastic wrap, preferably biodegradable, and place it down right up next to sushi and just carefully roll it right on. Then what we can do is meet that end and start to roll it. And before you get to the end, fold the one end over so that you can easily see where it starts. So you wanna get this as tight as you can. Remove this, get that nice and tight, and then spin each side so it encases it. Just like that. And now we have that perfect looking little sushi roll encased in there. We'll put it on the cutting board and carefully cut it in half. Really sharp knife, nice and clean. Make sure you cut through all of the plastic. And cut those in half. Make sure it's nice and tight. Cut those in half. Make sure you cut all the way through the plastic. And then because of that little side that we kept, we can just put it right on the plate and unwrap these beautiful inside out rolls. Serving them on the side, or you can plop them up like this and they stay together really, really well. Well, that's it guys. I hope you guys really found this video useful and helpful and you have a fun time trying to make some inside out sushi rolls using these tips and tricks. If you find this a little difficult, make the regular rolls. They're a heck of a lot easier and they're just as delicious and tasty. So again, Merry Christmas to you guys. I hope you absolutely love this. Like, comment, let me know below what you wanna see more videos of and to making 2021 the best year yet. Oh wait, but I gotta try them, right? So let's take this guy here. Let's just give it a go. I like them like this. I don't even necessarily need dipping sauce, but you can use any dipping sauce you want. You can check out my Naturally Rawson Dressings book. Make a whole bunch of different dressings, you know, and give them a dip or otherwise just pop them in your mouth. Mmm! You're gonna love them. You're gonna love them. Let me know below. Why don't you try them? What do you think? Listen to much. Please love them see no fruit. The best inside out rolls. Raw vegan sushi food. Ooh, don't forget to check out my raw recipes playlist in the top left, the video just for you in the top right, subscribe for more videos in the bottom right, and get your three free ebooks in the bottom left. Grab your free raw recipe app, available on iPhone and Android with over 100 free raw recipes, common fruit and vegetable calorie breakdown, frickin' raw some food combined chart, shopping cart function, and so much more.